Hello, me again. I wanted to take a break from ISO testing to mention a utility that I use a lot and I felt like a lot of people don't know it exists. Maybe you do, uh, maybe you use it already, in which case leave a comment down below, let me know what you use it for, how it's important to you. Uh, and the tool is Clonezilla and uh, we're back on my ThinkPad X220 that I use for all my ISO testing and you might be thinking wait a minute this is Ubuntu 1804 yesterday Alan installed Lubuntu now you're right and I wiped it out uh, by using a tool called Clonezilla so I use Clonezilla in order to take snapshots of this laptop I don't do this all the time but I do it at key points uh, for example if I I'm just doing a bit of ISO testing. I'm not going to take a snapshot of the machine. But if I do some ISO testing and then I end up leaving the uh, installed operating system on there for an extended period of time and I start using it in order to become familiar or to test it out a bit further, then I'll probably grow fond of that install and of all the data and software that's on there. And so I'll take a snapshot of it so that I can go back to it in the future. One of the things that I find interesting and useful is restoring old installations and then trying to upgrade them. And by having these old, in inverted commas, old installations kicking around and then upgrading them, I can test that whole upgrade process. And I'm going to probably talk about that in a future video. But today I wanted to talk about Clonezilla. And so Clonezilla is awesome. You download it here, stick it on a USB key. Uh, I have a USB key here that has it on that I've plugged in and uh, you'll see down here there I've got Clonezilla installed this USB key I made months ago as you can see I wrote it uh, sometime last year September and I leave this key it's a there's nothing special about it but it's it's distinctive and different from all the other keys that I have on my desk and so I know this to be my Clonezilla key look I'll show you it here hello uh, this is it it's a really old retro Ubuntu USB key with one of those connectors that hides inside and a thing that you can use to um, uh, put it on a lanyard or around your neck or something like that uh, that's a thumbnail for the video right there isn't it um, <laughs> so that's the USB key and it sits on my desk and uh, it's only 4 gig but that's all it needs to be and I stick it in the machine and I boot from it and uh, I back up the machines to a hard drive that's attached to this machine so I've got uh, you may have noticed in the file manager this 2 terabyte drive I've got a directory called clones and that 2 terabyte drive is a a Seagate spinning rust that sat in one of those USB enclosures where the drives can be easily removed. Uh, it's because this is a laptop, I don't have lots of drive bays, but I've got an external USB attached thing that I can just vertically drop a drive in. And this one sits in there pretty much permanently. And I've got all these clones of various things. So I tried out elementary towards uh, the end of last year and the install that's on here is actually this one uh, and this is the these are the files that clonezilla creates when you back up um, and i've just updated this system uh using well i just booted it up and let it update itself in the background um and now i want to take another snapshot of it so i thought now would be a good time for me to show you clonezilla so i'm just going to restart this system and i've got the usb key still attached say I'm going to restart hopefully it should yep there we go so it should reboot I've got the first boot device set to USB uh, and in theory this should just boot straight to that USB drive but I've also got the external two terabyte drive it might try and boot off that and fail oh no it worked so this is what happens when you boot clonezilla you may have an older key kicking around or you might even have a newer one in which case the user interface may have changed but this is what I'm used to. So I'm just going to press enter to boot into the default live environment. And I'm going to take an image 
of the drive that's in my laptop onto the two terabyte external drive just as a periodic you know i've updated this thing i'm going to take a snapshot of it and i may come back and use that again later and the reason why i'm doing this is partly to show you clonezilla and partly just to update this snapshot of the machine because I'm going to do some further things to it later and I want to have a snapshot before I do that and obviously this is Ubuntu 1804 which doesn't have ZFS uh, built in so I didn't do a ZFS install so I can't use those kind of software snapshot features okay so I'll pick a language most of this is just going to be me pressing enter through clonezilla uh, use the default keyboard layout yeah that's fine I'm not going to be typing much anyway so that's fine start clonezilla now there's two options here you can either start clonezilla which takes you through a menu driven interface or you can go into a shell and there's a command line uh, set of tools and when you run through the menus of clonezilla partway through when you actually get to the, the part where it's going to do the the job that you've asked it prints out all the command line options so you could bypass and go into expert mode choose enter shell and then just type the command in and do it manually yourself i'm going to go through the menu because it's easier it's got lots of modes i'm going to use device image mode which is i'm going to back up this uh, image to an external uh, usb device uh, i could back up to a remote ssh server or a samba server i have one of those but I actually prefer keeping them all locally attached. So I'm just going to say local dev, which is going to back up to a USB drive, the two terabyte one I showed you earlier. Now at this point, it says you probably want to attach that device now. And so when you press enter, it sits there and scans for devices. And if your device doesn't show up, maybe it's not switched on, hasn't got power or isn't plugged into the right USB port or whatever, plug it in until it shows up in this list. And the device is SDC. So you can see there's SDA, which is the uh, internal SSD, and then SDC is the external two terabyte drive. You can see that from the size on the far right hand side, so it's easy to identify which is the right device. And it says update periodically, meaning plug the drive in, and then when it shows up in this list, press Ctrl C to exit this window. So I now know that the drive shows up, so I can press Ctrl C. That then goes back into clonezilla and asks me which is the device that i'm going to back up onto or restore from so what's the external storage medium and it's not that first one because the first one is my internal drive it wants me to pick that one so it's got a big warning there the note thing is telling you it's the other drive not the one inside your machine that you want to back up it's the other drive that you want here so i choose that and now it's asking me what directory do I want to put my clones in or what do I want to restore from? I've got this directory called clones. And you don't want to pick one of these individual backups. I want to put it in the clones directory. Now you can organize whatever folders you want on that, that external drive. I'm just, I just dump everything in here. And so I just tab down with the tab key to done and press enter. I think it has mouse support as well. So you could probably click on that. Um, yeah, there you go. You could probably click on that mouse. That's me wiggling the mouse. Uh, so it's now saying uh, it's mounting that and it tells you how much free disk space there is. So I've got available 1.4 terabytes on there. Plenty of room for me to back up this internal drive. I use beginner mode with Clonezilla. So I'm not an expert with this thing and I just use it to snapshot machine, uh, machines. So what do I want to do? Do I want to save the disk to the external a USB drive or do I want to restore from it or do I want to save only a partition or restore only a partition so there's lots of options in here and I actually just want the first one I want to save a local disk as an image on an external drive so pick that one it's an easy now it offers a name that it, of the, the folder that it's going to create within that clones folder that I've got on that two terabyte drive now I tend to tweak the name slightly obviously you can call it anything you like subject to you know the file system naming standards or whatever whatever characters are allowed but I tend to put in there the first word is the operating system that's on there um, and the version or something that 
indicates what version it is. And then on the end, ooh, did I write that? Yep, up to date. That's all I'm going to put on there. Um, if I'd installed a bunch of specific software or I tweaked it in a particular way, I might put something in there. But the first part I usually use is the operating system name. The middle bit is the date stamp. And then the bit at the end is just you know, what state the machine is in. It's simple as that. Press tab, press enter. Okay, what are we going to put in that image? And the answer is the contents of this internal disk. So it's a 240 gig SSD. I press enter. And oh, this asks, do you want to do a, a file system check before you do the save? Now, I don't need to do this because I literally just booted into the thing you saw me in the desktop and I think it's perfectly fine. You can do that. I generally don't and it's been fine. So I'm just going to skip that. Uh, what you can also do is once the image has been created, you can do a check to verify that it was saved correctly. So this is takes a bit longer, but I tend to do this. It seems like a good idea. I've never actually had an image fail, but Probably one will fail the day I don't do this check, so I'm going to do this check. You also get the option to encrypt the image. So in the event that you lost the drive that's got an image of your machine on, you could be less worried about the fact that you're losing a drive containing all your data. So uh, you might want to encrypt the image. I'm not going to because there's not a lot on this. It's just the operating system and a few applications and not much data. I'm not too fussed about that, so I'm not going to encrypt the image, but that's entirely up to you. Then you choose what to do when it's finished. So you can either have it wait and ask you what to do when it's finished, so you can look at the screen and see what it did. Uh, that's what I tend to do. Or you can have it reboot or power off. In this particular case, I'm going to have it power off, so that I can walk away and know that when it's finished doing the the clone and then the verify it'll close down the machine and I won't be leaving it on and the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can just turn around and look at the machine and when it's off I know it's finished it's as simple as that um, so I'm going to choose that and okay so here's the bit where I mentioned earlier where it tells you the command line options you can use for clonezilla so this is the bit where at the start of clonezilla you could have chosen enter shell and this is the command you would use in order to perform the task that I've just asked it to do which is to back up this uh, disk to an image on an external drive then we get into I think it's going to ask me to confirm uh, so here's what it's going to do uh, the machine ID there is the model number of ThinkPad that I've got SDA is the OCZ SSD and there's one partition on there that it's going to save which is the 107 gig partition I think and it's going to put that on this external drive in a folder called Ubuntu 1804 the date up to date are you sure you want to do that yes enter now it asks you I think does it ask you to confirm me oh no it doesn't oh well <laughs> I thought it might give me another option to confirm ah it doesn't confirm twice when you're backing up, but it does confirm twice when you're restoring, because that's the point at which you're going to wipe the internal disk out. And that's it. That's a simple introduction to Clonezilla. I'm now going to leave it running, uh, and obviously it will take a certain amount of time to back up hundreds and hundreds of megabytes over USB to that drive. And um, when it's finished, it's just going to shut the machine down. Uh, Similarly, you can restore the other way, and so that's how I got 1804 on this laptop in the first place, was I restored off of uh, one of the images that I'd taken some months ago. This install of uh, 1804 was done, I think, February last year, so like February the 10th or something like that in 2019, and I had updated it through last year, and then I snapshotted it in late last year, maybe September, November, something like that. And so I just restored it, did the updates, and now I'm backing it up again so that it's fresh for me next time I want to restore and if I want to use 1804. And the reason I do that is 
because sometimes I want to restore an image in order to test something out. Someone will say, oh, can you reproduce that on 1804? And I've upgraded all my machines to 2004, so I can't. But what I can do is very quickly and easily restore an 1804 working machine that has data and applications on it. So it's more of a real world example of a system onto my real hardware and test it out there. It's not a lot different than taking a snapshot of a VM image and restoring that, which I also sometimes do. But I find this more pleasant because it's real hardware and I quite like doing stuff on real hardware. So yeah, that's it. Uh, that's me using Clonezilla. I'm interested to know if you guys use some different tool or do you use Clonezilla? How do you use it? Leave a comment down below. I'll see you next time for another one of these videos. Thanks for watching everyone.